My name is Joram Dori, and I'm a Doctor of Laws candidate at the University of the Western Cape in South Africa. I'll be presenting on the paper, Dating Money as Legal Fees in Namibia and Zimbabwe, Are Lawyers Laundering Proceeds of Crime? Lawyers usually offer legal services to criminal defendants in cases involving corruption, money laundering, drug crimes, or tax crimes. Most persons implicated in these cases have the financial muscle to hire the best legal minds in the country. The hired lawyers have a right to be paid for their legal services, but unfortunately, they may find themselves being offered dirty money as legal fees. In a basic money laundering case, a criminal successfully launders dirty money by using it for any legitimate purposes, including payment of legal fees. And it is a criminal offense for any person to accept such dirty money with knowledge of its criminal origins. Hence, a question is asked, are lawyers launderers for accepting dirty money as legal fees? The issue of tainted attorney's fees is contentious and there are two sides of convincing arguments. On one side, criminalization of tainted fees adds muscle to the fight against economic crime it denies criminals the opportunity to use and enjoy proceeds of crime through payment of legal fees. It also denies criminals an unfair advantage to build a strong defense team using dirty money against state prosecutors who are usually under-resourced, particularly in developing countries. Also, rogue lawyers may become willing participants in money laundering schemes, e.g. by inflating legal fees to be paid with proceeds of crime. On the other side, criminalization raises serious questions on the attorney-client relationship and the right to legal representation. Attorneys may avoid criminal defendants involved in financial crime in, in fear of being offered dirty money and to be prosecuted later. There is a conflict of interest where the attorney's client in avoiding prosecution for accepting dirty money is pitted against the defendant's interest in being represented by an impartial legal counsel. Also, overzealous state prosecutors may threaten defense counsel with prosecution for accepting dirty money until the defendant agrees to the state's preferred counsel, and therefore it violates in a way the right to legal representation of the defendant. Hence, the issue of tainted attorney's fees is a contentious one and countries have adopted different approaches. In Namibia, the Prevention of Organized Crime Act is the chief money laundering legislation. Sections 2, 4, 5 and 6 include provisions which criminalize the receipt, retention or use of proceeds of crime with knowledge or when the person ought reasonably to have known of the criminal origins. There are no provisions which allow lawyers to accept dirty money, with the exception of sections 26.1 and section 57.1, which empower the High Court to order payment of reasonable legal fees from restrained or preserved process of crime on condition that the defendant has no other legitimate means to pay for his or her legal fees. In Zimbabwe, the Money Laundering and Process of Crime Act is the main anti-money laundering law. Section 8.1b and 8.3 criminalize any acquisition, use or possession of proceeds of crime with knowledge or suspicion of its criminal origins at the time of receipt. Similar to Namibia, legal fees can be paid from dirty money through a court order for payment of reasonable legal fees from interdicted process of crime on the condition that the, the defendant has no other legitimate means to pay for his or her legal fees. Hence, the legal position in Namibia and Zimbabwe is that lawyers cannot accept dead money as legal fees unless authorized to do so by the court dealing with recovery Proceedings relating to dirty money. Interestingly, 
The court can authorize cleaning of dirty money for the same purposes criminalized by law. In, in comparison to the two countries, the United States' position is that tainted attorney fees are not criminalized. Initially, the Money Laundering Control Act did not exempt tainted legal fees from monetary transactions uh, which were criminalized due to criminally derived property. It was, criminal, it was criticized for its challenge to the attorney-client privilege and to the right to legal representation. As a result, it was amended and now exempts any transaction necessary to preserve a person's right to representation as guaranteed by the Sixth Amendment to the Constitution. However, state authorities in the United States are still not comfortable with acceptance of tainted legal fees with knowledge of such origins. A case of, uh, of reference is the United States against Wales, where an attorney was prosecuted for accepting dirty money from a client. The attorney was acquitted both in the court of court and on appeal, and the, the 11th second held that regardless of the attorney's actual knowledge, the plain language of section 1957 of the money law exempted criminally derived proceeds used to secure legal representation to which an accused was entitled under the Sixth Amendment. Last year, the Department of Justice also showed its intent to still prosecute lawyers for accepting debt money. It issued guidelines which state that the department will not prosecute lawyers for, for accepting debt money for the legitimate representation in, in a criminal matter, except if there is proof beyond any reasonable doubt that the attorney had actual knowledge of the legal origin of the specific property received and the required menstrual does not include any willful blindness. The second requirement is that such evidence, evidence should, ha should not have been derived from any confidential communications between the client and the attorney throughout the criminal case. Also, the guidelines state that the sexual exemption should, would allow criminal prosecution of defense attorneys who knowingly receive and deposit tainted funds as, either as part of a sham or fraudulent transaction or as legal fees for representation of a client in any non-criminal matter. This shows that United States authorities are tightening grounds for exemption from prosecution for accepting debt money. The discussion on Namibia, Zimbabwe, and United States have showed that countries are not comfortable with acceptance of dirty money as legal fees. The fight against economic crime requires taking a stance against dirty money, and that includes making it clear that lawyers become launderers when they accept dirty money as legal fees with knowledge or suspicion of its origins. By their professional nature, Lawyers are susceptible to money laundering risk from clients. Regulators are asking lawyers to help in combating money laundering by requiring them to be vigilant when dealing with clients and to report any suspicious transactions. For instance, the Financial Action Task Force recommendations 22 and 23 set out obligations for lawyers to assess risks of money laundering by their clients and impose a duty to report suspicious transactions. Of course, such an obligation does not apply in criminal matters. However, the fact that a lawyer cannot report suspicious transactions by a client in criminal cases does not mean he or she should accept that money. The attorney-client privilege protects confidential communications for the purposes of, of obtaining legal advice, and it should not be used or confused 
as a shield by lawyers to acquire proceeds of crime. On the issue of the right to legal representation, criminalization of tainted fees does not restrict defendant or defendant from choosing a lawyer, but it restricts the use of data money to pay such a lawyer. The defendant is free to choose any legal practitioner of his or her choice, provided he can afford to hire the lawyer with clean money. If the defendant cannot afford legal representation on all legitimate expenses, he or she is guaranteed of the right to be represented by a public defender, just like any other criminal defendant. Also, lawyers are enablers of financial crime, and their involvement with dirty money should not go un un unchecked. Once lawyers are allowed to accept dirty money, it, op it opens up doors for complex money laundering schemes which will contaminate the whole global financial system, where inflated legal fees find their ways to include dirty money which will be laundered um, as legal fees. In other words, lawyers should not be, become willing participants in cleaning of dirty money through payment of legal fees. And it has to be made clear that any lawyer who willingly gets in touch with dirty, mo with dirty money has dirty hands. And all in all, making it clear as well that crime does not pay even for attorney's fees. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.